It's not too late to make someone's holiday season a special one. Start now as an Amazon delivery station warehouse associate to earn some extra money for the holidays. You'd help bring joy to thousands near you by preparing packages and loading them up for their final delivery. With night and early morning shifts available through the new year, you'd also have the flexibility to spend time with your loved ones. To start as a delivery station associate, go to Amazon.com slash holiday work. Amazon is a proud equal opportunity employer. More than one in three people will face cancer in their lifetime. Unfortunately, fear can stop you from getting your cancer screening, but it won't stop cancer. Early detection can save your life. Don't wait for symptoms to appear to act. Cancer screening is safe, effective, and accessible for everyone, including free or low-cost screening programs. Go to cancerscreeninfo.com right now for free screening resources and recommendations from the American Cancer Society. Don't wait. Early detection can save your life. Go to cancerscreeninfo.com today. Cancerscreeninfo.com. Welcome to the Fantasy NBA Today podcast. An excellent Tuesday to you all. Welcome to Fantasy NBA Today once again. I'm your host, Dan Vespers, and this is a Sports Ethos presentation. SportsEthos.com, the website, at EthosFantasyBK, or you can just follow me on Twitter. I'll point you to all the things you need to find, at Dan Vespers. Coming up on today's show, a very, very brief review of the Monday nine-game card, really just hitting on the three or four things I thought were the most important. And then we're going to talk to our buddy, Adam King. It's Tuesday with Adam. Tuesdays with Adam. We put a uh, question out on Twitter, although I think Adam and I each have a couple of our own guys. I thought it might be fun right now to hit on... It's not not so much a panic thing. Uh, I don't think that does the discussion justice, because everybody does like a, should we panic or should we hold kind of thing. This is really more of a, who are some of the names you've been thinking on? Whatever it might be. Buy, sell... Whatever, because, you know, with panic, there's this, I think there's the feeling that perhaps maybe a drop is on the is on the uh, horizon with certain guys, but I don't really want to steer it in that direction. So Adam and I are going to talk about some of the bigger name guys that have been generating a lot of fantasy trade info, reality trade info might even be in there. Uh, recent news, we talked on yesterday's show about Kyrie Irving, more COVID protocol stuff today. But let's just dive right on in and talk about what I think were the biggest stories over the last 24 hours or so. First of all, uh, Taylor Horton Tucker is the latest player to enter protocols along with four additional members of the Brooklyn Nets. But on the flip side of things, it sounds like most of the Hornets are getting ready to come back. LaMelo Ball has been cleared uh, for reconditioning. It's such a weird Weird way to phrase it. I feel like we're part of a cult now. Jalen McDaniels, Mason Plumley, those guys also cleared to be uh, to join, rejoin the team at practice, basically, and then they can condition themselves for playing basketball again. And that probably puts a lid on some of our fun streams out in Charlottetown. Uh, Kelly Oubre is going to take a massive hit here. Cody Martin is going to take a massive hit. There's a possibility that those guys actually hang on for one more game while players like Ball... And Plumlee, if you're talking about the P.J. Washington front, while those guys kind of get their wind back. But in the meantime, uh, just prepare yourselves for the fact that if you do squeeze out another game from them in head-to-head, head-to-head's easier because, you know, it doesn't hurt you. You just get a slightly lower performance. Roto games cap. Do we want to use a guy like... I think I probably would still use Martin. Cody was hanging around right at the edge of the top 100. So if he has even any kind of small bump here... He maintains. Kelly Oubre had been so hot. I don't know how you bench him until he cools off. And then with Washington, again, we're talking about Plumlee, who's been out for whatever reason, injury, and then COVID for a very long time. I think you can probably start all those guys in Roto Games Cap one more game, and then we'll just kind of take it day by day from there. With THT out in LA and Anthony Davis potentially still out, Lakers play the Mavericks tomorrow. We don't have to worry about that, and possibly AD might be back for that ball game. But if there was a fourth fiddle on the Lakers, it probably has to be Malik Monk. I would not start him in a Roto Games Cap format. I would potentially consider 
a head-to-head streaming option. But as far as yesterday goes, as far as the big Monday card was concerned, the biggest stories on the board. Terrence Davis once again yanked from the rotation. Sacramento got bludgeoned by Toronto, and he didn't really get his minutes until... I think he basically played like the last 14, 15 minutes of the ball game, and it didn't change anything. They were already buried by 20 at that point. I, I really don't know what the Kings need to see to yank some of these dudes out of the lineup. Darren Fox talked about how they just weren't sharp, that it wasn't that guys weren't trying hard enough. It's just that they suck, <laughs> which is a pretty weird tack to take in all of this. Halliburton was bad. Uh, Bagley double-doubled, but you can't. I mean, his other stuff is just such a mess. It, I don't know if things are going to detonate in Sacramento. Harrison Barnes was horrible again. I think you kind of have to bench basically everybody besides Halliburton and Fox on this team, at least right now. I'm not dropping Barnes. I'm actually hanging on to Der- Terrence Davis for one more game just to see if them getting smoked like this while he's not part of it is like, oh, hey, wait a minute. We were actually like kind of competitive when we were giving Davis minutes. Not that he changes things all that much, but he's been sort of like a souped-up iteration of Buddy Heald over this stretch. Uh, but it's a mess, and if they do explode the thing, Davian Mitchell would be the guy who potentially takes a step forward, but we're not quite there yet. Uh, Chris Boucher is another interesting footnote here. Um, Achua's in protocols. Birch seems like he's still a few games away. Ananobi seems like he's still a few games away. So, Boucher, you got to be streaming right now. Nothing massive in Miami. Cleveland, I, you know, if you have the stones to play P.J. Tucker in a Roto Games cap, go for it. I think he's streamable in head-to-head. Dwayne Dedman is very much a matchup center right now, and that's as far as I go with anything from that ballgame. Warriors, Pacers, nothing I think we really need to dive too far into. Bucks, Celtics, Chris Middleton hyperextended his knee. Um, that's usually like a week because it wasn't a, a particularly severe one. I'm guessing he misses maybe two, three, four ball games, something like that. And I would tell you to race out and get Pat Connaughton and Grayson Allen, and maybe they do end up having short-term value when you take a high-usage guy out of the mix. But Dante DiVincenzo is also due to make his return tomorrow. So now you got all those guys pushing each other for minutes, which slides them all back more into that head-to-head schedule streaming bucket as opposed to Roto Games cap. Time Lord is by low as far as I'm concerned. We might talk about him a little bit more with Adam Houston. Uh... Went crazy late in this ball game. Eric Gordon, in particular, DJ Augustine had big ball games. Um, from a pickup drop standpoint, I'm still good with Garrison Matthews as a stream. I think you probably do. Oh God, it kills me to say it. You probably do stream Eric Gordon at this point. I hate myself while I'm saying it out loud. You're not doing anything with Augustine. Tate's been on your roster. Everybody's squatting on Shengun anyway, so he was okay here. That's good. Saw his minutes tick up because he was part of a reserve unit doing more. Don't read too much into it, though. And on the Hawks side, Cam Radish up to 28 minutes, which, not that it's going to completely obliterate Kevin Herter, he still played 34 minutes, but his usage was lower. I think you can stick with Herter a little bit longer, see how it goes. Gallo got bonus minutes because John Collins was in foul trouble, so you can probably hang on there a little bit longer as well. Gallo, by the way, fouled out himself. Radish is not an ad. I think that these guys end up all kind of pulling from each other and potentially all three end up more streamable. But for now, you can wait. You can do what you were doing a little bit longer. Philly, Memphis, don't care. This was a blowout. I think the only note here really is that DeAnthony Melton probably still good enough with Morant out. When Morant is back and Brooks is back, that's when we'll reassess that situation. Embiid was a late scratch on the Philly side, so you know what to do on the Drummond front. We move along. Dallas beat the Daylights out of Charlotte. We just talked about the Hornets. Nothing really on the Mavs side to dig into. Denver beat Washington. Jokic got ejected on his way to maybe the line of the, the year. Um, when built, when Barton is out, Monte Morris is a go. When Barton is in, Morris's usage takes probably a little bit too big of a hit. Beal double-doubled, but he's still a mess in so many respects. Washington at least was competitive in this one made kind of a charge late. They were down most of the ballgame. I don't know where Davis Bertans came from, but he got hot, and uh, you're not probably doing anything with it. Just a messy, messy team right now. And the Clippers, still without Paul George, won again. Isaiah Hartenstein had a big ball game, 12-5-7. and seven. Serge Ibaka has been picking up DNPs. Hartenstein and Zubats now are splitting the center minutes, at least here in the short term. I do wonder... Paul George coming back and Nick Batum coming back. Does that squeeze Marcus Morris back up to a small ball center? And does that shave off of Zubats and Hartenstein? In the short term, you probably pick up 
Hardenstein. He looked too good uh, in these most recent games. But the more safe play, at least when George is out, is Terrence Mann. He's playing massive minutes. He does a, a whole lot of across-the-board stuff. Didn't get the steals and blocks here, but as long as Paul George, Paul George is out and any game he misses the rest of the way, we now know Terrence Mann is your guy. Maybe it changes a little bit with Batum back, but it sure seems like Terrence Mann is your guy. And on the Phoenix side, they were just gassed in this one. Cam Johnson uh, continues to be a pretty good stream with no Devin Booker. More head-to-head than Roto for me, at least. I dropped JaVale McGee into some lineups, and he went for 13-13, and 13, but didn't get any blocks and shot the ball kind of poorly. So uh, a weird little blend there. Phoenix plays again tonight, and uh, I'll probably roll the dice on McGee again tonight because, you know, starting center, provided DeAndre Ayton is still out. That's, of course, the big uh, massive factor there. Before we jump into our buddy, uh, our segment with our buddy Adam, I want to remind you guys to please check out our friends over at thrivefantasy.com. I know you're sitting there like, Dan, you've been hammering us with this thing the last week. Yeah, you know what? It's a really big deal for us. It's a uh, powerhouse new partner. We're just really excited to get new partners on the podcast. It means we're doing things right, and that makes me feel good. And then the way that we can keep doing it is continuing to have success. You guys have gotten cool stuff at manscaped.com. You guys have won a bunch of money with our friends at mybookie.ag. Now, win money with Thrive Fantasy and thrivefantasy.com and the Thrive Fantasy app on the various app stores, both Apple and uh, Android apps available. Prop up, as they say, our buddies over at Thrive Fantasy. Deposit $10 using promo code ETHOS. Get a $10 match, that's part of their deposit match bonus, 100% up to $100, and two free $20 NBA nightly contest tickets. So you can enter the $20 contest twice for free on a $10 deposit. You're getting the extra $10, so it's deposit 10 you end up basically with $60 worth of credits to play, effectively. $5,000 guaranteed contest in that $20 entry. Thrive Fantasy is cool because you don't have to go dumpster diving. It's non-dumpster diving daily fantasy. It's the best players on the books, the biggest names in every game. What are they going to do? You pick the over, you pick the under, you earn points based on how many you hit. And if you're among the league leaders in your contest, you take home cash. It's so simple. It's so straightforward. You know, yesterday's card, you don't have to worry about what Armani Brooks is going to do in Houston, who, by the way, had six points. You can just focus on Christian Wood, Trey Young in that ball game. You can focus on Kristaps Porzingis in Dallas, Charlotte. You can focus on Jokic, on Bradley Beal in the big games. You don't have to worry about what Zeke Naji or Denny Avdia is going to do in those ball games. That's where your your traditional DFS you have to hit those ones, or your lineup is dead and you can't afford the superstar. No, it's different. Dive Fantasy has an angle to make this more accessible for those of us who like betting. And those of us who like full season fantasy and just like watching basketball for to see the superstars either go nuts or go clang off the backboard. If you have the over or the under, respectively. So check out thrivefantasy.com. Use promo code ETHOS to get that 100% deposit match bonus and the two $20 tickets. And if you want to go big, deposit $100, you get a $100 deposit match bonus and four of those game entry tickets. So deposit 100 you end up with $280 of credit in your account. Pretty sweet. Thanks to Scott and all of our buddies over at thrivefantasy.com. Again, once again, the promo code is ethos. Let's talk to Adam. Hey, what's up, dude? You're a busy man these days. What's going on? Yep, yep. Uh, yeah, lots of uh, lots of plates in the air is that the the phrase i don't know what it is i've got <laughs> sure. lots lots going on at the moment um and just waiting for it always happens this time of year i guess leading into christmas everything needs to be done and there's not much time so here we are yeah you got extra work stuff extra family stuff but we squeezed you for an appearance and so i want to dive right into the good stuff here uh, the great Adam King, by the way, you can follow him on Twitter at Adam King 91. We sent out a tweet last night. And if you want to get involved in this stuff, you should probably just follow us on Twitter. That would make your life a whole heck of a lot simpler. And you could, you know, put in questions for these things. But it was basically, we're not doing deep mailbag this week. We're kind of looking at individual players. We're looking for who's a buzz right now. Are there trades in the mix? Are there other things we can be do- that can be done with certain guys uh, so a few questions that came in, and 
uh, a couple of them surprised me because I thought we might see more on like a, a Time Lord or something like that. So I might just throw him in myself just because, you know, I run this damn show and I do what I want. Uh, but I want to go to Kenji because he hit us with a few names in his and we can kind of pick and choose a little bit. Bradley Beal, who we talked about a bit last week, so maybe we can jump over him. Tobias Harris, Vooch, Nerlens Noel, Buddy Heald. What are your thoughts on on those four guys? And maybe we can kick some ideas around on whether or not you should be going to get them, what do you want to do with them now, so on and so forth. Harris, Vooch, Nerlens, Buddy Heald. We'll open up with a four-pack today. Uh, yeah, so first I'm looking at, at the names now, so it's going to be very um very off the cuff uh in terms of thoughts tobias harris i think i don't have him on any teams and, and i know he's one of your guys um for your your old man squad um for yeah, me been weird. yeah i i don't think i've had him on a team ever potentially so i don't i, I just assume that he's rolling along at about top 50 value he's one of those players that and he's uh, not by the way just and, to jump in not, on you he's no. he's missed some games so you know his totals rank has been a little lower he's at 64 so not mm. far off the pace but a little bit yeah so i think i mean i, I i'm just assuming that he'll be a little bit better than this um it feels like the i mean the sixes have been a little bit disjointed this season mm -hmm. as have a lot of teams um waking up to see that the Nets, half their team's gone now. Um, oh, yeah. Welcome. You know, happy yeah. happy Wednesday to you, Tuesday to the rest of us. There's Yeah, there's been some stuff. THT also yeah. in protocol. Yeah, yeah. I saw that as well. Um, I don't know what's going on over there. Everyone's getting COVID again. Yay. Um, Groundhog yeah. Day. I, I know. I'm, I was in a bad mood yesterday. I'm trying to shake it today. It just feels like you know, you relive the same moment over and over again. Yeah. Um, I know it's not yeah. going to be as bad because there has there have been so many advances and all that stuff, but just to, like, yesterday seeing games postponed and seeing all these yeah. folks get put into protocols, I just had this moment of, like, what? What What, what year? What day is it? What year is it? And mm. uh, you got to shake that off. Got to shake your head around. I think I even, like, kind of got pissed off on yesterday's podcast and then had to, you know, shake that thing off again. Uh, <laughs> but... On the Tobias front, it seems like the biggest thing happening is that his field goal percent is down, despite actually taking more two-pointers this year, uh, not necessarily than last year, but then a couple years ago. And then his three-point per shooting percentage is down as well, but rebounds are pretty good. Um, defensive stats also down. Like, I think I might... I think I'm probably subscribed to your camp on this one, which is the Sixers have just been super weird and disjointed and, you know, he missed time and I'd probably buy on him. Would you buy on him or would you just be like, ah, whatever. It's like not, not, not exciting enough. <laughs> uh, yeah, look, personally, probably not. But I think if, if he was a guy that, that you wanted, um, you probably could get him at a round of value at the moment. So, um, yeah, 64th, whatever you said, um, I think if you if you're offering a player back in that similar range, he he can. I mean, we know he can get into the top forty without too much trouble. So I don't think he gets any worse than this. So I, I think this is probably his floor this this year. So yeah, look if 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 he fits a a need uh, for you, then I, I'd be I'd be trying to to throw someone out there to get him um, because I think he'll be probably top fifty ish the rest of the way. I might throw Scotty Barnes at someone. See if you can ride the rookie's mega wave here with some Raptors hurt or out, and yeah. maybe that gets the job done. Um, Vooch, he's been all over the map. He's actually not. He's right next to Harris. He's at 62 on the year. Had a couple of really big ball games and then kind of settled back in. Uh, but, you know, I, I almost don't care how long it takes. This still feels like the most obvious buy low I've ever seen. He's shooting 40% from the field and 64% at the free throw line. Guys don't just forget completely how to shoot. Like, everything else is in line with where you'd want it to be. Yeah, the usage is down, which we, we knew was going to happen. But, you know, you fix the percentages with him, and he rocket boosts probably two to three rounds up the board. I guess the question is what it would cost. Are you on the buy train with Vooch, or are you are you worried that this is there's something else going on here? I don't know. I pu I'm putting words in your mouth. That was bad question asking by the host right there. 
No, I'm sort of with you. I think he he's not uh, a little bit like Harris, I suppose. This feels like about as bad as it'll get for him. Um, forty percent. I mean, he he's not a high efficiency center. We know that he's not going to be up at fifty five percent or or even close to that. But he should get back to forty five percent without too much trouble. Um, and the free throws are just weird. I'm not sure what's going on there. So I think he, yeah, he's probably without without doing too much other than hitting some shots. Um, I think he gets back up to be a, a top 40 player. He's not going to be where he was last year. We know that, but top 40, uh, I think. I'm just having a look at who you could offer offer for him. Um, yeah, I think he might even be able to go higher than that. Rashawn Holmes is someone you could throw out there. CJ McCollum, um, yeah. Mikhail Bridges, guys that are solidly in that like 40 to 55 range that aren't about to go leaping up the board, but have enough name recognition where it mm. might still be enough to get the job done. That's that's the yeah. bucket I'm looking at right now. Scotty Barnes, as you mentioned before, he could be another name as well. Mm-hmm. He, he's a bit of a bit of a flashy name at the moment. Yeah, um, I love it. And and yeah, I'd take Vooch over him every day of the week. What about the combo of Nerlens Noel and or Buddy Heald? How do you feel about those guys? Well, uh, Noel, I mean, I uh, I had to move. Well, I moved Mo Bamba to my IR spot. Well, that sounds like he's going to play. Um, <laughs> so you got to move him to my. So I had an open roster spot in a in a league last night, and Noel was available on waivers, and I didn't. I didn't grab him. <laughs> That's probably where I am on on <laughs> Nerland at the moment. I actually went with Larry Nance instead. Uh, no, you know you're not you're not exactly hurting my feelings by going with Larry Nance there. So you don't no. have to feel too bad about that. You know, you know, I love me some Nance. Make him dance. Yeah, I'm hoping that um, that that first game where he started, he had some foul things going on, and so yeah, if he, if he can get 30 minutes, I'm I'm sort of quietly excited to see you know, what he can do. <laughs> kind of taking um, the same tack of like fact number one it's gifting season fact number two no one returns alcohol so this year get everyone on your list the gift of beer, wine, and spirits delivered with Drizzly in under 60 minutes. 6-0, you heard that right. Right now Drizzly is giving every new customer $5 off their first order. Just use promo code FAST5 at checkout. Download the Drizzly app or go to drizzly.com. That's D R I Z L Y.com and use the promo code FAST5 for $5 off your first order. It's unbelievable. The convenience of home delivery in under 60 minutes. You get it when you need it. Shop across stores so you can choose from a huge selection. Get exactly what you want. Compare prices between stores to get the best deal that you're looking for. Drizzly is the number one app for alcohol delivery. Again, download the Drizzly app or go to drizzly.com now and use Fast 5 at checkout for $5 off your first order. This is for new customers only. And again, Get beer, wine, and spirits to your doorstep in 60 minutes. More than one in three people will face cancer in their lifetime. Unfortunately, fear can stop you from getting your cancer screening, but it won't stop cancer. Early detection can save your life. Don't wait for symptoms to appear to act. Cancer screening is safe, effective, and accessible for everyone, including free or low-cost screening programs. Go to cancerscreeninfo.com right now for free screening resources and recommendations from the American Cancer Society. Don't wait. Early detection can save your life. Go to cancerscreeninfo.com today. Cancer Screen Info. Dot com. Yeah. I want to get too excited because they might bench him in two games, but if he's yeah. starting, love me some Nance. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I'm kind of with you with Nerlens. Also, I, I'm also not interested in Buddy Heald. I think the Kings are doing just enough to show teams he's healthy and then trying not to get him hurt. Um, Nerlens is very much a Roto games cap only kind of dude also because he misses about one out of every three games these days with lingering knee and back and whatever stuff going on. If he's starting which he is right now, and playing 25-plus minutes, I I think we have to play him when he's healthy enough to go. But, you know, the Knicks, they're another team that's kind of a mess right now. They're like, we've been talking about 
players on teams that are a little screwy in this this bucket of players right now. Um, and also centers just stand around because Julius Randle occupies every every yeah. part of the key. Anything that's anywhere near the bucket, that's Randle space. So, but, but I still think you kind of have to throw him in there because we saw what he did last year as the starter. Um, and he, to me, he's too good to leave on the wire in uh, games cap, but head-to-head, I, I totally get it. And you're more of a head-to-head guy. You, you just can't have a guy who plays two out of every three games. That's brutal. Yeah, that's right. And he, and I know he's this defensive guy, but he hasn't he hasn't been super effective in in that area. I think he's only averaging sort of just over one assist and one block. I think I had a look at his numbers last night. A little bit like Matisse Thibel. He's sort of a guy that you you look at and you go, I need to grab him because he's going to get me two steals, one and a half blocks. But he's not doing it this year no. um i believe it'll so, come around i believe it'll come around with him yeah. if he's starting but yeah things are weird and he's hurt so yeah um a lot of guys are down this year he's he's not alone um jalen brown he made his return folks are wondering if they could sell on him after one ball game and i'm inclined to say maybe like normally i'd say no but he looked pretty good in his return. 19, 4, and 5, two steals a block, three three-pointers on Monday night. Really a, a quality performance. Helped get Boston a win, a badly needed win for the Celtics. Uh, I wasn't super high on Brown, largely because he does have these lingering in- injury stuff. It's always the same knees with him that, you know, he'll miss a handful of games with stuff, and then there was a hamstring, so one thing started leading to another. I would try to get out from under Jalen and I would target pretty much anything inside the top 55 back. I'd yeah. feel pretty good about what about you? Yeah, I think so. Um, I, I mean, I like him as, as a player, as a fantasy player, but the, I mean, ha- this hamstring thing has, has been ongoing. They, they obviously brought him back too early. Um, and we, I mean, we talk about that a lot over here in in terms of soft tissue in, injuries, hamstrings, calves, that sort of thing. Right. Um, players often miss, like I, I know, and it's it's a different sport, but in our like in football over here, and um, where where they play weekly, not not nightly like the NBA, um, but even in the basketball here, if someone gets a hamstring injury, they're often out for a month, and whereas in the NBA, they often just give them a week or a week and a half, two weeks, and then try to bring them back gradually. And we saw with Brown that they did that and it didn't work. He, he, he just, he wasn't ready to go. Hopefully he is now, but he also has that knee thing going on that's been bothering him for, what, a year, two years, maybe? It feels like it's it goes back uh, a little bit. So I would be, yeah, look, I'm with you. So like if you can get a top, 60 top 55 player that's probably where he ends up this season with upside to go higher but there's just a lot of uncertainty with him so i'd be okay to to flip him out for someone who's potentially going to play every game or at least the majority of the games yeah probably don't need to be as aggressive on the sell in a games cap format just to be clear to listeners because a lot of it for me is the injury stuff with head-to-head because of the injury risk, you you just don't want those missed games, rest games, maintenance games, whatever it's going to be from someone that's not about to go blasting past their ADP. Uh, there is the dice roll element of this too, you know, uh, where for every game he's back and playing well, you could probably ask for more stuff in a trade. How far do you push it, Adam? I think I'm in mm. the camp of... I'm looking for him to give me five consecutive healthy games, and you probably have to look at Boston's schedule, find out if there are any back-to-backs coming up or something like that, because that does screw it up. They they actually have a back-to-back after, I think they're off for pretty much this entire week, and then they go the 17th and 18th, which, off the top of my head, I don't know which day is the week, Friday, Saturday of this week. Um, he might skip one of those for maintenance. Mm. So that this might be, you know, sell him now with these three days off. There's a little bit of value there. Or you wait until they have a week, week and a half, where they don't play a back-to-back and try to move him then. Uh, But how far do you push it? What do you try to squeeze out of him value-wise? Yeah, it's... uh, Yeah, it's a... 
it's a question with no answer, really. I mean, do you, yeah, the, the further you push him, the more value you get, but the higher the chance he goes down with injury again. So it, it's it's going to be, yeah, how, how risky, I suppose, are you prepared to be? Um, I'm probably with you. I, I think, I mean, yesterday was a decent game, and, and I think I talked about it on the, what are we calling it? Fantasy Overtime Show. Sure. Um, <laughs> <laughs> sure. Um, last night in that, uh, I'm not. I, I wouldn't. My expectations on Brown. I think if you've got him on your roster, you need to be keeping them in check at the moment. Like you, you he's not going to come back and be the top sixty player or top fifty player that we know he can be. You probably have to give him a week or so, which is what three or four games, and then he's probably going to be hitting value. Um, so I'm probably waiting a week, um, or as you said, four games. But in that time, does he go down with his injury? Again? Right. <laughs> and then you um, push back yeah. your ability to sell by whatever it is, two or yeah. three additional weeks. So, yeah, I mean, that's the that's the dice roll, trying to maximize mm-hmm. it, sell the stock at a, a best possible point. By the way, I screwed up. I forgot to for us to mention Buddy Heald. I, I, I said I didn't want anything to do with him. I think I may have interrupted you. Did you get a chance to talk about Buddy? I don't think so. Oh, I didn't, but I don't need to. Um, <laughs> yeah, screw it. Yeah, I'm, he's uh, he's another guy that I don't think I've ever had him. Maybe I had him for one season, but the Kings are the Kings are a mess. It's like who knows what's going on there? Um, he's been on the trade block for about twenty three years. Yeah, and hasn't moved. Is he going to move? I don't know. Um, if you've got him, I I doubt you can sell him for any sort of value at the moment. Uh, I'd just be holding on to him and hoping that if he does get traded, he goes somewhere where he's going to play 33 minutes a night and be able to take every shot in the world. Yeah, and it probably won't happen. So, yeah, I, it's streamable. Uh, Alec Burks is another one I wanted to throw on here, and he might be our last guy because he's actually pretty interesting. He now missed a game uh, for the birth of a child, which, of course, is a very good reason to miss a basketball game, but he had been scuffling a bit prior to that his value artificially depressed by a one point game that loss in toronto uh 15 points the previous night but only two boards a steal and a block so kind of uh a limiting of his uh fantasy profile after a stretch where he was just incredible inserted into starting lineup he was scoring 20 points a game five six rebounds three or four assists a couple of steals what would you do with Alec Burks? Do you trade him? Do you try to buy on him? There's a weird little pocket right now where after a bad game and a missed game, his value has ticked off its high point a little bit. What are you thinking? Yeah, I think yeah, he's, a, he's an interesting one. I think by, by the time I was sort of prepared to say, okay, maybe this is real, I was too late, I think, because I, I was just a bit hesitant on him um, in terms of his role and, and his starting role, we've seen him play good minutes before and put up good numbers, um, but he does have injury things from time to time. Uh, and then, yeah, his last game, as you said, was a was a one point game where he just he couldn't get anything going. And then he went off for the birth of his child, so he, he's going to be uh, refreshed when when they when he, he plays the next game. I'm. I don't know. He, I'm really undecided on him. I think this is just something we haven't seen him do on a consistent basis. The steal numbers don't seem sustainable to me, but maybe they are. Let me have a look at his... I'm just having a look at his numbers now. It's just um, been so... Lo- he's an interesting case because... And I'm jumping in while you're looking at the numbers. He's really hmm. been a guy who's added the three-pointer to his arsenal over the years. In his younger days, he really didn't take any. And it was limiting for a guy who didn't shoot the ball particularly well. He was a low field goal percent guy, high free throw percent dude, but didn't hit any three-pointers. And now, last two or three years, four years potentially even, he's actually been more of a two three-pointers per game dude who, yeah, like you said, he's he's probably closer to about one steal per 36. So the fact that he's over that this year, uh, maybe it does come down. Uh, I'm not super concerned about that just because the other things he does now can can be enough. And mm-hmm. Lord knows that Knicks team needs a consistent... Op- you may be into punk rock, soft rock, or classic rock, R&B, 
hip hop or house, country, techno, or techno country. But no matter what kind of music you listen to, here's something else you should hear. Please consider getting vaccinated. Talk to your pharmacist today about Comirnaty COVID-19 vaccine mRNA. This message brought to you by BioNTech and Pfizer. More than one in three people will face cancer in their lifetime. Unfortunately, fear can stop you from getting your cancer screening, but it won't stop cancer. Early detection can save your life. Don't wait for symptoms to appear to act. Cancer screening is safe, effective, and accessible for everyone, including free or low-cost screening programs. Go to cancerscreeninfo.com right now for free screening resources and recommendations from the American Cancer Society. Don't wait. Early detection can save your life. Go to cancerscreeninfo.com today. Cancer Screen Info. Com. Offensive weapon, not that like Burks is a superstar or anything, but I actually remain relatively bullish on him. I think I would try to buy. I just have no idea what it would take to get him right now. Like, what would you have to give up? I'm not giving up a top 50 guy for Alec Burks. I might give up like a top 85 kind of guy. I could be convinced. Certainly, I'd give up a top 100. Um, but I still think he's got... I think he's got some good games left in the tank. I, I I don't think he's the guy that they're blaming things on right now when stuff goes sour lately. It's more like Fournier or <laughs> bench units yeah. or whatever's going. Like things are they somehow it was Mitchell Robinson's fault that they couldn't score. I I don't know. I'm I'm a little bit at a loss. Yeah. The, the Knicks were one of my favorite under bets this year because of what a massive jump they made last season and because it really seemed to be heavily based on Julius Randle outlier performances and just trying harder than other teams. Um, so I, a, a meltdown was not completely unforeseen. I just, the the blame right now is kind of weird in New York, don't you think? Yeah, yeah. They, I mean, they started really well this season and then they've just fallen in a hole and they're just trying to find a, a scapegoat, it appears. Um, and yeah, I'm with you. I don't think it's Burks uh, and I sort of quickly coming up with a number in my head i was i was similar to where you are i i I thought top 90 i'd be okay giving up a top 90 player to get him um but i mean he's finished he hasn't finished entire inside the top 170 in his career so he he's way above where he's where he's been previously um he's never averaged well apart from the 2013-14 season he's never averaged more than 0.6 steals Per game, um, he's up at 1.2. So I think that comes down a little bit. But, I mean, yeah, it, it's just, it's really hard to know because this sort of came out of nowhere. Um, he wasn't a guy that was on a on a radar as, as this player who's, who's going to step up this year and it, things, the stars are finally aligning for him because we assumed Kemba Walker would be playing and he's just cheering on from the bench at the moment. So <laughs> yeah. it's... Yeah, look, I mean, there's no sign that his minutes are coming down at the moment. So, um, yeah, grab him and, and see. And, and as we know, once you get into top 90, top 100, those guys are interchangeable um, to some degree anyway. So you can often stream to get that value or or just grab someone else off waivers who's going to give you top 100 value for two weeks. Yeah, it's uh, that that window. I talked about it, I think, on a, maybe it was last week or the week before, the sort of streaming window, how far that extends in each direction. I, I think, at least on the Burks front, to swing it back around, I, to, he's above it to me, um, especially with guys consistently out. Kemba, like you mentioned, is just out. Doesn't matter what's happening. And Barrett and protocols and so on and so forth. Uh, I've, I've been sort of positive on Derek Rose lately too, and he's also getting a nice boost with different folks missing ball games. It's going to be this way, folks. Fo- it's Games are going to be missed. Maybe a best way to leave it. I don't want to dive too far into that. Uh, Adam, <laughs> you are just getting your day started. So, because I want to make sure we continue our shtick, good morning and thank you. <laughs> yes. Yes. Good, uh, oh, good afternoon just yeah. for you. Yeah. yeah. We just yeah, barely no, made it. We're, we're just, um, yeah, getting started. Kids kids have got two more days of school. So we're trying to get them motivated to go. Um, and my wife just hobbled <laughs> out with her boot, her oh. special boot on her, <laughs> on her foot. Yeah, you, um, it's the scene over there for you. Yeah, yeah. So I'm just, yeah, I'll head off and I'll get them ready and get breakfast done and keep blurbing and 
You got this, buddy. Actually doing my job. Yeah, you got this, man. We believe in you. Yeah. All right. <laughs> He's Thank Adam you. King. I'm glad someone does. <laughs> Adam King, 91 on Twitter. Uh, until next week, sir, we will... Uh, Actually, you had a really good idea for next week. I'm a, we'll tease it on Twitter, but mm. Adam's, Adam's got a, a plan up his proverbial sleeve. We'll tell you about that uh, over the next couple of days. Thanks again, buddy. No worries. I'll talk to you soon. That was our buddy, Adam King. Always a pleasure. Always a pleasure to talk to Adam on Tuesdays. We'll try to keep this schedule going as long as humanly possible. Generally, it's my fault when it doesn't work. <laughs> as per usual hey uh if you haven't done it already make sure to get express vpn if you're going to do anything on the internet your internet service provider is watching you all the time every website you visit everything you download they know they can see it so get expressvpn.com go to the website expressvpn.com forward slash hoopball yes it's the old coupon promo code don't forget expressvpn.com slash hoopball and get a bonus three months on your 12-month subscription. So 15 months for the price of 12. It's a special deal for us here at Fantasy NBA Today and Sports Ethos. And as I've said before on this show, the way that really makes it the sting, the real haymaker that ExpressVPN delivers is when you want to watch something on League Pass or MLB Extra Innings or whatever the hell they call the hockey package or the football package. If you're in a major media market you probably get the channel for the team you want if you're not you probably don't but you might be close enough where you're blacked out that's the part that kills so many i've talked to multiple people just within sports ethos that are like look i can't i can't watch my home team play because of weird blackout rules they don't care because it's impacting you know, smatterings of people in small cities across the country. Everybody in the big spots, they get what they need. They're, they're fine. They don't have to worry about that. But you guys can take it back. And those of you that are, what did we talk about yesterday? 250 miles out of Oklahoma City? Turn on ExpressVPN and tell League Pass that you're in Rio de Janeiro. ExpressVPN.com slash hoopball. 15 months for the price of 12 Special URL, again, expressvpn.com slash hoopball. Go get your subscription today and go start watching what you want, where you want, when you want. Stop giving things back to your ISP. Get your privacy back. Nice relaxing Tuesday in the NBA, other than the fact that uh, we had a ball game postponed. Just in case, just in case anyone listening to the pod is not up on the news Steph Curry going for the all-time three-point record at Madison Square Garden tonight. I know we're all going to enjoy that ball game. From a betting standpoint, Phoenix in a tough spot right now, flying from L.A. to Portland on the back-to-back. That's a tough one. That's about an hour and a half flight, roughly, late game to late game. They're gassed. They're missing key guys, assuming Aiton's still out. Can Portland finally get a win against a good team, even if they're kind of beat up at the moment? We shall see. And Brooklyn, still favored by a bunch, just by missing uh, everybody besides their superstars right now. All all of them in COVID protocols. I I don't know what we're going to see on the COVID front. I've been getting that question a lot as well. I'm not an expert. I do have a degree in molecular biology and immunology, which I'm putting to zero use by being a sports broadcaster. But what I, what I know just from watching the way all this stuff goes and percentage and eff- efficacy of things like that is until we find out that the NBA is getting all their folks boosted, these things are still going to keep happening. Because now you're at the point of waning immunity, either from infection or vaccination. You're seeing that happen with both. So people are still going to get it. There are going to be exposures. The NBA is going to have to figure out what they want to do about it whether it's, you know, get a bunch of booster shots or uh, start restricting what players and teams can do for whatever it is, a month or two, while everything gets under control. We kind of just have to wait and see right now and react. There's not much we can do proactively on that front. It's a shame, but that's just how it is. Anyway, big thanks again once uh, more to our buddy Adam King, at AdamKing91 on Twitter. Uh, Hope this 
Hope our dive into some of the key players was at least marginally useful. Um, again, please do follow me on Twitter, at Dan Vespers. I got all these polls going right now where we're trying to figure out what it would take to buy low on particular guys. Dame was one I was working on the last couple of days. We got Bradley Beal in a few of those now. Uh, there have been other suggestions. I think I want to do Time Lord. Key guys that I look at, and I'm like, there should probably be some buy low opportunity here, but then you have to find out what is it going to cost? What type of player is it going to cost? Is there profit margin there? Everything we do has to be looking at team needs and profit margin. That's how you win. You treat fantasy, you treat, un- you know, it's less fun, I guess. Team no fun here over on Fantasy NBA Today, but you, you treat it like a business, and that's how you win. I'm Dan Bespris. This is Fantasy NBA Today. A sports ethos presentation. Ethos Fantasy BK on Twitter. A lot of you guys have found it over the last week. Please keep doing that. That's how you're going to get your fantasy news. That is a fat edge if you're not following them that you are leaving on the table. We'll talk to you guys tomorrow. On Wednesday. I think that's Wednesday, right? Tomorrow's Wednesday? Yeah, that's perfect. All right, later, everybody. <laughs>